you and I, in our salvation, worked out. Amen to God. So even when they were oh, priests and Levites, when there was the whole Levitical order, with the shedding of blood and the sacrifices of rams and bullocks and turtle dove and the burnt offering and the sprinkling of the ashes of an ever. There was a greater plan ahead. And then somebody, there was a plan God had. Those were the mere shadow, the typology of the real thing which was to come. And then somebody, that was a preparatory period. The foundation was being set in order. Because God knew that he had a perfect sacrifice. He knew that when Jesus Christ comes, he would enter into the Holy of Holy Years. He would define uh, the old and the new. I uh, met somebody and preached them together. And he said, Bye, priest, would uh, but by to blood sacrifice. Uh, because he offered uh, himself uh, the offering, uh, the sacrifice uh, for sin. Go ahead and worship God, somebody. Preach a little bit. So it was a part of God's plan. So Peter said, before he laid the foundation of the world, before he stooped and formed man out of the dust of the clay, and after he was through compiling man and this lump of clay was standing before him all it was was a lump of clay he saw it the place the eyes were formed the nostrils were formed the mouth was formed the ears were formed but that all it was there was no here and there it was just a piece of lump of clay and God stooped Oh God Almighty, look at this piece of lump of clay and it is the last church of man and man became a living soul, man of heart, heart, man of heart, man of lungs, man of liver, man of intestine, are you with me somebody? Man brain start to function, man start to see, man start to hear, amen somebody, and the day God created man, he gave man responsibility. I want every believer to know that you are a responsible human being. Like you don't have no responsibility on the face of the earth. God created you and He has given to you and I our responsibility. Are you in the church of the living God? Well, even before all of this took place, there was a plan to redeem one. Man, when God made us it, now help me, Jesus. Man was not created yet, but nevertheless, God had a plan to redeem you. You want to pause a few seconds and think about it? Thank you, Lord. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. Then if we weren't created, our four parents weren't created, but God had a plan to redeem us. Why then should we live and die and go to hell? Those who are joining via social media, pause long enough. Think about it. Before the foundation of the world, God said it. And Peter said, but it was manifest in this last time for you. Manifest is to be made known. Bring it to light. So that was which was uh, uncovered. God make it be known. Are you with me, church of God? I don't know. Uh, the coming of the Savior of Christmas is not only of divine origin, but it is a promised seed of the woman in Genesis 3:15. God Himself said, and I will put No peace. I'm going to put a stroke between you and the woman. 
Holy Spirit between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his ear. This is the first promise of a redeemer. This began the long list of prophecies that concerned the coming of the Messiah, the promised one. Oh, it would be from the woman's seed, indicating the eventual virgin birth of Jesus Christ. That's what God was saying. Now. It will be of the seed of the woman. Simply saying, Jesus shall be born of a virgin. It's not man. I mean, so many. no wonder when Joseph started to ponder and said, Mary, what's happening here? The angel of God came down and said, Joseph, the son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary. She's your wife. Don't divorce her. Don't send her away. Carry her home. Married her. For that which is in her is of the Holy Ghost. That was the plan of the old devil. The devil came between the revelation and the real thing. He came between and he blinded Joseph's mind and understanding. So all Joseph was seeing was unfaithfulness. All Joseph was seeing was our unworthiness. All Joseph was seeing is that the woman dissing. All Joseph could have been seen. My wife, I'm waiting to take home. She come home with pregnancy. You could not see beyond that. Although he's from the line and the lineage of David. Although he's coming from the same order the same generation of order but he could not understand what was behind this he did not question Mary he just took the decision woman I have to take you out of this thing I'm not going to set you up and make you a public example because the devil want to laugh the devil want to look at God and say see it I kept you this time but God is always on the job God is always an interrupter. God is always a deliverer. God is always the revealer. God is always there to bring his will to pass. You cannot stop the will of Almighty God from being accomplished. My name is Church of the Living God. Go ahead and worship him, somebody. I want to hear some. has been the theme of endless ages. The Father presents Jesus Christ as the seed of the woman, Genesis 3.15. In Genesis 49.10, he is Shiloh. In Exodus 12, verse 3, he is the Passover lamb. Leviticus 8, 7 to 9, he is the anointed high priest. In Numbers 21, verse 8, he is the star of Jacob. Oh, in Numbers 24, 17, he is the present serpent. In Deuteronomy 18, 15, the prophet like Moses. In Deuteronomy 32, verse 4, he is the great rock. Joshua presents him in Joshua 5, verse 14, as a captain of the Lord's host. In Judges chapter 2 verse 1, he's a messenger of the Lord. Ruth called him in chapter 2 verse 1, the king's man, a uh, redeemer. In 1 Samuel 2 verse 10, he's a great judge. 2 Samuel 7 13, he's a seed of David. In 1 King 8 15 and 26, he's a Lord God of Israel. In 2 Kings 19 15, he's a God of the cherubim in 1 Chronicles 16 35. He's a God of our salvation. 2 Chronicles 26. He's a God of our fathers. Ezra call him in chapter 1 verse 2. The Lord of heaven and her Nehemiah the prophet in chapter 1 verse 5. He's a covenant keeping God. Job in Job 19.25 He's a risen Lord and a returning redeemer for I know that my redeemer liveth. Amen somebody. Oh the psalmist in Psalm 2.7 
and 12 and Psalm 16 verse 10 is the anointed son the holy one and in chapter 23 verse 1 he's the good shepherd in Psalm 24 7 through 10 he's a king of glory the wise man Solomon in Proverbs 8 he's the wisdom of God and in the Psalm of Solomon chapter 5 10 through 16 he's a chief among 10,000 they all together lovely Isaiah has over some 34 designation of him so in chapter 7 14 he's a born of a virgin is Emmanuel, oh God with us in chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah call him wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, and the prince of peace. In chapter 53, verse 3, he's a man of sorrow. Jeremiah the prophet, in Jeremiah 23, verse 6, and 33, 16, he's a Lord of our righteousness. In Lamentation 3, 22 through 23, and chapter 31, 33, he's a faithful and compassionate God. Daniel present him in chapter 2, verse 34, the stone cut out with all hand. In chapter 3, verse 25, he's the son of God. And in chapter 3, verse 17, he's the son of man. Who's the other prophet? In chapter 13, verse 9, he's the king of the resurrection. Joy of the prophet. In chapter 2, verse 11, he's the God of the battle. Amos tells us in chapter 4, 13, he's the God of hosts. And in chapter 7, 9, he is a bloodline. Ah, uh, Obadiah, in Obadiah 8 and 15. One book, Obadiah, one chapter. So in verse 8 and 15. He is a destroyer of the proud. Jonah presented to us in chapter 2, verse 10. He is a risen prophet. And in chapter 3, verse 1, he is a God of second choice. Michael tells us in chapter 4, 1 to 5. He is a God of is a God of Jacob. Nahum tells us in chapter 1, verse 2 and 15, he is the avenging God and is the bringer of good tidings. In chapter 1, 12 13, the everlasting, the pure, and the glorious. In chapter 2, verse 14, and chapter 3, 13, Ababakop is the anointed one. Oh, Zephaniah present him. In chapter 3, verse 10, 15, he's the king of Israel. Abai tells us, in chapter 2, 7, he's the desire of our nation. Zachariah tells us, in chapter 3, verse 8, he's a branch. In chapter 6, 12 through 13, he's the builder of the temple. In chapter 9, verse 9, he's the king of the triumphant country. And in chapter 14, verse 9, he's the king of the earth. In chapter 4, verse 2, he's the son of righteousness. Somebody go ahead. All of these are righteous. This is Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Because it's a cult. If you hear somebody, he's not just coming, he has been from way back. Amen, somebody. We have been started to look at what the New Testament has to say about him. We just giving you a little touch of what the Old Testament talk about him. That's what Christmas is all about. That's the meaning of Christmas. The Savior of Christmas. The anointed, you know somebody, his origin is divine. Can I talk? One more minute, I got to close. What about the Savior? What about the Savior of Christmas? Not only that is of divine origin. Not only the Old Testament spoke abundantly about him, but the Savior of heaven 
His mission was to seek and to save. His mission was to seek and to save that which was lost. Did he come to set up our kingdom? His mission was to seek and to save that which was lost. Let me close for today. What's the true meaning of Christmas? That a Savior has come. Of 
sinful flesh. God, we rejoice today that you sent him as our redeemer. Because Lord, we needed to be redeemed. We were down in debt to sin. We hold that debt we could not pay. We thank you, God, that you were able to send Jesus Christ to pay the penalty, to pay that which we hold. And therefore, today we are free because of that first Christmas morning. Lord, help us. Help us, Daddy. Father, help us. That we will all rejoice today. But this will be on our heart as we recognize that before you created the universe, you had this in store for us. You had it in store where you would have set us free through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, your son. I pray for everyone, whether they are tuning in or they are listening directly over to this voice. And I'm not yet God surrendered to the Savior of Christmas. I pray, God, even by listening today, that hearts will be put, consciousness will bring, and somebody will see the importance of turning to Jesus Christ. Somebody will be able to renounce sin. Walk out of sin's bondage. Because the Savior has come to set us free. Lord, I pray for the church. Lord, there are some prayer requests. I pray for those requests right now. I pray, God, for Mr. Nelson, who is in the hospital not well. You are a healer. So many have testified that you have healed. So many have testified, God, of your divine intervention. Lord, we know there are healing in your wings. We know there is a balm in Gilead for our sorrow. So we pray for those healing. We pray, God, for Sister Wright and her family. Lord, we pray for a divine intervention. God, I pray, God, that as she has requested prayer, you know the needs, you know the challenges, you know the burdens, you know the struggles, and you know, God, that she has faith. But your word tells us that if there's faith like a mustard seed, the mountains can be spoken to her. And they are removed. I speak to those mountains in her life this morning, uh, this afternoon. I pray, God, that by her faith, she shall be delivered. By her faith, God, she shall be made whole. By her faith, you shall be breakthrough. Shackles shall be broken. Prison bars, whatever. Oh, God like situation and circumstances you shall intervene and they shall be no more we come God Almighty in the name of Jesus Christ your only begotten son against every plot against every plan advance of the adversary you tell us God you have not given us the spirit of fear but of and a soul mind. Ah, Lord, help the Holy Spirit of God. You have given us weapons. They are not carnal, but they are powerful to the pulling down a stronghold. We pull down spiritual stronghold. We pull down financial stronghold. We pull down God and employment stronghold. Lord, Whatever stronghold uh, is standing uh, against your people this afternoon, uh, we pull them down. Uh, we set at liberty those who are bound. Uh, we declare them free. We declare.
declare them healed. We declare them delivered. We declare breakthrough in the mouth of light, the mouth of problems, the mouth of challenges. We declare breakthrough in their employment circumstances. Oh, breakthrough, God, in their family and relational challenges, relational challenges and circumstances. We declare breakthrough in spiritual challenges, demonic oppression and demonic possession. We come against such because you have given us power and authority. We bind up that which need to be bound. We lose what need to be lose. Doors that are open that need to be shut. We shut them tight upon the power the authority of the warrior. You tell us, God, that when you shut, no man shall open. And when you open, no man can shut. So we shut God. We pray, God Almighty, you will close up some doors against adversary. We come against every adversary upon the authority of your word. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we come against every attacking enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and we set at liberty those who are bold, those who are cast down, we lift them up. Those who are discouraged, they are encouraged. Those who are weak, we make them strong. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, you are the Savior of Christmas. Save souls today. Save those who need to be saved and deliver them. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's people say, Amen. 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 And amen. He goes out to worship God. Go ahead and magnify the Lord Church. The brother reflects about time for the women's ministry. Hundred dollar march. It's, uh, you have your hundred dollar march. You can you just come. Uh, you can do it. You can come into the uh, room will be at the front. Come, come, come. Just praise you. Just give us a song. With a brother or sister, yeah. you want to worship with the, 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 the women ministry with your hundred dollar march. It's been a while we have not collected any come, come bring it. Bring it. And the angels call it
and Savior Jesus Christ. The love of God the Father. Faithful fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Rest, remain, abide with you all. Now, forever. God bless you. Remember, Sunday School, 1 p.m. I think that's what's up. Uh, Family Life Ministry, YouTube, Zoom, 7 p.m. Become for Pastor uh, Fasting on Tuesday. Those of you who have not come to fasting for a while, you need to come to fasting. Indeed, God is with us in fasting. People are testifying about their healing, about their breakthrough, and their deliverance. Because God is really doing a mighty thing in fasting. So we invite you to Tuesday's fasting. And I invite you to meet me, join me Wednesday evening, 7 p.m., for a moment in the world. 7 p.m., join me for a moment in the world. On Wednesday evening, Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube. God bless you. Take care. Say hi to somebody. Social distancing. And please, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, stay safe, keep safe, practice the protocol, and remain social this time. Good travel. Bye, bye, Jaden. Since I want to go to